Namaste and Satsri Akal to His Holiness Shri Sadhguruji and Mataji and to the, all the audience also. Welcome to you all and thank you for having me here today to speak a little bit on the peace formula. So the title we've been given to speak about today is Spirituality for a Peaceful Existence. My understanding of the peace formula for the world is to firstly, firstly understand our relationship with ourselves. The first teaching in the Bhagavad Gita and all the holy scriptures is that we are spirit, we're not this body. Like Guldeep Ji said, we're just a vessel that carries around our soul. Once we understand that we're not this body, but actually we're an Atma or Jiva, or many other words that can be used, the soul, then we can understand that all these differences that are based upon the body can go away. So the differences of race, gender, caste, creed, nationality, sexuality, all of these immediately disappear and we can understand and engage with each other based on the fact that we're all the Atma or the Spirit. Once we understand our relationship with ourselves as being Atma, we can then take another step to try and understand our eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord. And as Gurdeep Ji and many has, have said before, the relationship with God is one. There is only one God. There may be many names for the sun, depending on which country you're in. You might call it the sun, you might call it Surya, you might call it Sol. But ultimately, there is only one God, which has, and he who has multiple names. So once we understand this and our relationship with God, we can start to act in that relationship with God. How do we act into that relationship? We do seva. We, we, we do seva for all of humanity, we do seva for the earth, whether it be for the plants, the trees, the oceans, the animals, but that humanity and that act of seva is for everyone. I personally feel that spirituality goes beyond religion, beyond that understanding that there are different rules, maybe different regulations for different personalities. Spirituality is a connection of the Atma or the soul with the Supreme Lord and that sees beyond all the, different dif all the differences we might have in our religions and it brings together the, the togetherness. Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, he states, Bhogta Ram Yatna Yagna Tasapasam Sarva Loka Maheshwaram Suhirdam Sarva Bhuta Nam Gyatva Mam Shanti Mrichati. He says, What is the peace formula? The peace formula is a person that is in full consciousness of me, knowing me to be the ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices and austerities, the Supreme Lord of all the planets and all the devatas, and the benefactor and well wisher of all living entities, attains peace from the pangs of material miseries. So let's unpack that a little bit. He's saying three things here. God is saying that I am the ultimate beneficiary. So any sort of tapasya, any sort of seva we do, any acts of service, all the things that we do on a daily basis, the only person that if we do it in a mood of dedication to God, then he becomes the ultimate beneficiary. We don't worry about the response of the others. We don't worry about reciprocation. We don't worry about getting any acknowledgement for the good acts that we're doing because we're doing it completely for God. And God appreciates everything always. Secondly, he mentions that he's the proprietor of everything, meaning that everything in this universe belongs to him, whether it be our cars, our home, our children, the atmosphere, whatever it is, whatever we own, we think that we own, doesn't actually belong to us. It belongs to the Supreme Lord. Now, if we put that into practical, into, uh, practically apply that, all these wars that happen over land, all of the kind of falls out, we, fallouts we might have with our neighbor or even our family members, it goes back to the fact that maybe we think something belongs to us. Hey, that was my bun. That's my toy. That's my car. That's my child. So this sense of proprietorship, once we understand that actually nothing belongs to us, it all belongs to God, then that understanding can bring peace within us, peace with our neighbor, peace with the whole of society. It takes away that selfishness that we have. And thirdly, he states that he's a supreme well-wisher of all. So God is not partial to anyone. Whether we believe in him or we don't believe in him, he provides us oxygen. He provides us the food that we need, whether we appreciate him or we don't appreciate him for it. So he's a well-wisher of all. He takes care of all of us. 
And if we can understand that, that will allow us to surrender and develop a more deeper relationship with him, a spiritual relationship, oneness that doesn't include anybody else, but is completely between ourselves and the Supreme Lord. Once we are whole in ourselves, then it's very easy for us to give to others as well around us. You cannot give anybody water from an empty cup. So how do we fulfill that cup? How do we fill it up? It's through chanting the names of God, connecting with that divine, connecting with the energy of the Lord through Kirtan, Bhajan, and connecting. That will give us peace within us, empowerment from God, and then we can then reach out and serve the rest of the community. So he takes care and he protects us. Knowing that, it gives us peace within ourselves and it frees us from all miseries. The Upanishads further goes on to say, so I'll speak, I'll speak just the English, that actually within everything, everything within this universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. One should therefore not accept those things, um, one should only accept those things necessary for oneself, which are set aside as a quota for each and every one of us and not accept other things knowing whom to whom they belong. So this can bring about the understanding that actually we shouldn't steal. We shouldn't steal whether it be items, whether it be glory, whether it be appreciation. We shouldn't try to take that away from others. We should be satisfied with what we have in our life. It's very hard to practice spirituality when there's a constant desire for other things. That is what leads to the world being un not peaceful and struggles. So understand that we have each an individual, love. one of us has our own quota. If our co neighbor has bought the latest car, latest number plate, we mustn't envy that because that's their quota, not our quota. So this sense of keeping up with the Joneses, or should I say keeping up with the things and the cause in this circumstance, so we should be satisfied with what we have. This can give us internal peace and then peace in the world also. So nothing belongs to us. Therefore, we should not be fighting over things unnecessarily. If we could all accept this and follow this, the world would be peaceful. The Sanatani understanding is that there are four legs which maintain dharma. The first one is ahimsa, non-violence, which is a topic that we've all spoken about before. Not just non-violence to other human beings, but non-violence to other living entities, meaning creatures, animals. So that's why one of the foundation principles within Sanatani philosophy is vegetarianism. And now we're moving forward towards veganism because of the cruelty towards cows. So this word stewardship comes to mind, taking care of the earth around us and those living in it around us. Leo Tolstoy also said, as long as there are slaughterhouses, there will always be battlefields. So wars in the world today are a direct reaction for that, the, the aggression that we give towards animals in slaughterhouses. Secondly, the second pillar of Dharma is no intoxication. If we are not in control of our own mind because we have taken intoxications, how can we be peaceful or expect anything from anyone else? This can also give us peace. No illicit relationships. Keeping the relationships between man and woman pure within the confines of marriage, it makes sure that we understand that this, le this personality isn't mine. It belongs to some they belong to somebody else. That could also bring about peace. So much war happens, so many battles happen, so many killings happen just based on this fact. And no gambling is at the fourth pillar of Dharma. Gambling increases your greed. I have won a little bit. I've done a little bit of work and won a lot. So that greed continues. Maybe I can win a bit more. So Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita that these four pillars of Dharma can bring about peace in ourselves, in our community and in the world. And most of all, he says that during this particular age that we're in, in this age of Kalyug, he says, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalam, Kalo Naste, Eva Naste, Eva Naste, Eva Gadir Anyata. In this age of quarrel and hypocrisy, there is no other way, no other way, no other way other than chanting the names of God. So whether it be Simran on your beads or Simran in Kirtan, 
we must carry on chanting the Lord's names, getting satisfied within the heart, connecting with the Lord. In Sanatani, we call it mantra, jap, like chanting mantras. Man means mind, tra means to release the mind. So mantra releases the anguishes of the mind and brings about peace from within. And speaking on other religions, we have so much in common. We're all ultimately trying to connect with God in different ways. It doesn't mean one path is right and one path is wrong. God is unlimited and the paths to him also are unlimited. He sees a variety in humanity. No two people are very similar, even those people sitting together. Even our siblings are not very similar to each other. So we all have different ways in which we connect to God and we should be able to be given the freedom, especially following authorized paths that have been given by him. Understanding that as a community, we can all live together peacefully, each individually connecting ourselves with God and with each other and without looking into the differences. So I'll finish there. Thank you for your time. <laughs>